no BS, I am going to go over cybersecurity certifications that are needed in 2023 and the ones that I feel like are trash to me. This is my personal opinion. So with, to do that, I am going to rate them from tier one, tier two and tier three with tier one being the ones that are very important that you need right now. And the tier three being the ones that I feel bad, but in the trash. I mean, to me, that's what I think. OK, all right. So let's start from the beginning. So the first one would be the CompTIA certification, the CompTIA umbrella. Every single individual talks about CompTIA when you go to college and you want to do cybersecurity or anything IT. We start talking about CompTIA, blah, 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 all those stuff. But today we are really focusing more on the cybersecurity section of things. OK, CompTIA Security Plus. That's what every single individual talk about, even the DOD. If you want to get any job in the DOD, you know, as a cybersecurity individual or IT individual, they literally have it on there that you have to have at least a security plus certification to meet your requirements for DOD jobs or whatever the case is. I totally get that. But is security plus really worth it? Let me tell you my opinion. I feel as though the security plus is more so one of those certifications where you just study some acronyms, you study some keywords, and then you do some multiple, uh, multiple choice exams and you're done. Is it really needed to me? It is not. I feel as though that it's one of one of those certifications where I can literally study that in two days and go take a test and I'm done with it. I have no real world experience. It does not expose me to any real world labs that I could do to make sure that, hey, once I get the job, I could do it right. Because most of the time people take these certifications, they still get the job, you know, but then at the end of the day, they don't know anything. So I would call it most mostly one of those entry level certifications that people take, you know, just to take it or get it because it's needed or it's one of those certifications that every single individual talks about. So from a tier one, two, three, where am I going to put security plus? I'll put it at a tier two. I think I'll put it at a tier two because yes, I mean, it's needed. People talk about it a lot. And when you're applying for cybersecurity jobs, it's on there that they need at least a minimum security plus and stuff. But I feel as though that is one of those certifications that really does not teach you anything. You can literally study a test dump and then you go take a test and you're done. I feel like there is nothing of importance when it comes to that. It's one of those ones that I feel as though that I'll put in the tier two. All right. So the next one on the CompTIA list would be Network Plus. Do you really need Network Plus to get into cybersecurity? To me, yes. You need computer networking to get into cybersecurity. I feel like it's one of those fundamentals that you need to get into cybersecurity because if you want to get into cybersecurity, like I keep saying over and over again in all my videos, you need to know how computers connect with each other, how they communicate through the network, through the TCP, IP, to the OSI model, blah, 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 MAC address, IP address, all those good stuff, right? You need to understand that. So Network Plus is one of those ones that you take just to know that, OK, I've studied networking online on YouTube or Udemy or whatever. You take that certification just to solidify the fact that you actually do know it. The main reason why I put Security Plus on number two or tier two is because you cannot take a Security Plus course online. Does that make sense? I mean, you could take a Security Plus course or boot camp or whatever the case is. But then with Network Plus, there are several um, avenues where you can actually do some labs and, you know, all those stuff like different labs that you could do on Coursera and stuff like that to make sure that you're solidifying your knowledge on, you know, network, computer networking and stuff. And it's kind of like literally static. So let's say if you're talking about IP address, uh, if you're talking about private IP addresses, right, you have the 10, the 192s, 172s, blah, 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 all those stuff. If you're talking about these stuff, you have to understand that these are static. It does not change. Right. But then when it comes to security plus uh, security changes all the time, right? Vulnerabilities change all the time. That is why I was talking about the fact that if you're taking a security plus, I would recommend or I would think that it would bring something out where you actually have some sort of lab that you're doing included in the security plus certification to know that you actually do know your stuff rather than cramming everything, right? But the network plus, where would I put that? I will put a network plus at a tier two because there is no lab as well. And I feel as though, yeah. You really can study that on your own. You don't really need a certification for it. But if you want to take a Network Plus certification, that's totally fine. And just a little backstory on that. When I started my IT career and I did not know the path that I wanted to go into, trust me, I took literally most of the certifications. I have a Security Plus. I have a Network Plus. I have a pen test. It keeps going on and on from there. I felt that if I have the certifications, it would literally help land me a job. But no, certifications do not land you a job. It literally, literally would get you in front of a recruiter and let them know that, hey, you have the certification. That's it. Or she could give you a try. That's about it. It does not give you a job. It can get you an interview, but it would not give you a job. All right. So that'll be Network Plus. I would tier Network Plus and Security Plus at the same rate. So it would be a tier two for me. Like I said, the next one will be the C sub plus, which dives a lot more into cybersecurity, right? They talk more about cybersecurity, like the risk management framework. They talk about vulnerability management, those type of stuff. So that you're actually going into the integrities of that and you're learning something. Or if you already know something, you or if you take a bootcamp with C sub plus, right? 
you're actually learning something from there. So to me, that would kind of like gear more towards cyber security as compared to the security plus and network plus, because I feel like those are just like fundamental on a scale of one to 10. I, those will probably be like a one because those are like the fundamental. CSAT dives a lot more deeper, you know, encompassing the network plus and the security plus together to help you understand how to mitigate risk that you get in your company and stuff like that. Okay. All right. So then uh, where would I put the CISA, CISA? What would I put CISA? I would put CISA at a one because it actually incorporates both network plus and security plus. Okay. It puts it together and then you get to learn a bit more when it comes to cybersecurity aspect of things. The next one under the CompTIA, you know, umbrella would be the pen test plus pen test plus. A lot of people take it. Do you really need it? If, if you're really not going to be a pen tester, I don't see the need of you actually taking the pen test plus. And I don't know why they did it because I feel as though it has no value. So, yeah, I'm not even going to explain a lot more into the pen test plus, but I'll put it in a three or I'll put it in the trash. You know, those that I, I don't know, because I don't think it's one of those things where you're, you're really going to study a lot or learn anything, you know, from the pen test plus. I feel like there are a lot more certifications out there that are geared towards you being a pen tester as compared to you actually taking a pen test plus with CompTIA. Not to say that it does not benefit anybody out there. It probably does but to me i feel as though you really do not need it if you want to get into cyber security to me it's just my opinion okay so that's the umbrella when it comes to come to you with the certifications that i know of that i feel as though that if you could take or if you you know trash it would help you out a lot and the next one that we're going to move into when it comes to the cyber security umbrella would be i sucker i sucker is a lot more geared more towards the grc which is the government risk and compliance okay government risks and compliance that would have to do with like the nist fed ramp the the isos all those stuff so it's more like on the auditing side of things. And I normally have an issue with this certification for my sucker. I, I don't know why, but I technically do. I mean, they have a certification called the CISA, which is a certified information security auditor. That type of certification. Well, as though that it's trash. It's just my honest opinion, right? Because you would go apply for a job as a security engineer or security analyst, and they have you have to have CISA. What would be what would a security engineer be doing auditing for? It's just my honest opinion. Like, what do you need a security? Like if you're a security analyst, if you suck analysts, what do you need CISA for? But then you have companies that would literally put it on there. I feel as though these recruiters just do a copy and paste. They copy, they paste it there, and that's it, right? I feel as though you don't need it. You really do not need CISA if, 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 if you want to get into cybersecurity. But some companies do require it, so I guess they'll probably you know, want you to have it before you get in there. But to me, I feel as though that you really do not need a CISA. If you're going into IT audit, where you're doing like the third party management, you're doing like the RMF, which is the risk management framework, then yes, I would literally tell you that you need that. But then if you're going to be a security analyst, if you're going to be a SOC analyst, a security engineer, pen tester, red hat, black, uh, blue hat, blah, 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 all those stuff, you really do not need a CISA. And then under the same ISACA, they already have another one, which is the CISM, which is a CISM, which is a Certified Information Security Manager. That is geared more towards managers, you know, how to manage an infrastructure when it comes to IT or the auditing side of things. But then to me, honestly, I feel as though you really do not need that certification if you fall under the security analyst, if you fall under the SOC analyst, if you fall under the um, security engineer, you know, uh, uh, um, type of things. But then if you're under the GRC, which is the government risk and compliance, then yes, they'll probably ask you to do it. But then if you're a third party or security assessor, what do you need SISM for? You're not a manager, but most companies will literally tell you that you need a SISM before you do it. I feel as though they should give you that experience first. And once you get that experience, then, you know, you move into getting that certification. Because personally, I feel like these certifications that does not involve any sort of labs are not worth it because... I can literally cram everything and come in, take a test, and I'm done, right? How do you verify or how do you validate that if I actually know my stuff? Because I can technically cram everything, come take a test, and I'm done, right? I don't know. I feel as though you really do not need that. All right, so now the next one that we're going to talk about is our certification that has to do with EC Council. All right, so EC Council actually has a certification called CEH, which is a Certified Ethical Hacker. So if you're an individual that wants to get into the cybersecurity industry, right? And you want to do these penetration testing. You want to do everything that has to do with pen test, right? To make sure that your system is good. That is very prone uh, or, or is blocked from vulnerabilities or these hackers or whatever the case is. Then CEH is for you, which is a certified ethical hacker. That one is for you because with that certification, it actually has some sort of labs that you can actually do and know for sure that you know your stuff. You cannot cram a lab because you don't know the question that's coming, right? 
But with this one, you can actually study or you can actually have some job experience to know that, okay, if I'm doing this lab, then I know what I'm doing, right? Like doing all these brute forces and stuff like that. You can do that on there. And this is one that I would really recommend that people should take. I would put this one at a tier one because it has labs. It actually pushes you to learn more. It actually pushes you to know that you actually know your stuff, right? It pushes you to that extent where you know that, yeah, I, I know what I'm talking about. It pushes you to the point where it's like, when I get the job, I know what I'm going to do, right? Make sense? Yeah. So it has some labs to give you that you know oomph, that that confidence on there it's compared to the ones that is just multiple choice where you go when you cram stuff you take a test and you're done you cram stuff take a test and you're done to me it does not make sense just just to me it does not make sense but people take it people like it that's totally fine some companies require it i'm not doubting that that's great all right so that was the ceh from ec council so now the next one that we're going to talk about is with ics2 ics2 right uh that they handle the cissp do you want my honest opinion when it comes to the CISSP? I normally have to take a breather before I actually talk about the CISSP. Because I feel like it's one of the wor most worthless certifications that you'd ever take. <laughs> not, not to say that it does not help folks. It does help folks. But I feel like it's one of those certifications that you could actually take within like a week. You steady, you go take the certification, then you're done. I feel like it's one of those certifications that you just cram that information. It, it literally does not prove anything right and i don't know why it's so so in demand because most companies most companies even if you're trying to apply for a security assessor role or if you're trying to apply for a role that has to do with uh cyber security engineer most companies will put on there that hey you need a cissp why if i'm a security assessor why do i need a cissp if i am a security engineer why do i need a cissp but you would have companies putting that on there i don't know if it's some sort of uh, uh, um nice thing to have because it's expensive too it's not it's not cheap it is expensive all right so i don't know why some companies do that but cissp to me if i'm to tier cissp i'll put it at a three it, it, it's just my honest opinion man i feel as though it's one of those certifications that it does not really prove anything but if you want to take it that's totally fine you could go ahead and take it all right that, that's totally fine as well all right so the next one that i'm going to take and all these certifications that i'm about to talk about now all of them, I will put them at the tier one. I'm even going to say it even before I talk about it, all right? I'm going to put it at a tier one. So these certifications would be the, the Google Cybersecurity Certification, the Microsoft Cybersecurity Certification, and the IBM Cybersecurity Certification. I know, I know, I know. A lot of people talk about it. The main reason why I like these certifications is because it takes you from fundamentals to mid-level, not expert, mid-level. So it gives you that backing, right? It gives you that fundamentals. It gives you that foundation for you to understand how cybersecurity works from start to finish. Because meaning in the Google uh, cybersecurity certification on Coursera, you start to learn a lot of stuff. Some of the stuff that you're going to learn on there is how to utilize Python to, to make sure your life is a lot easier in the cybersecurity world, how to utilize SQL, how to utilize these vulnerability management tools, and how to use the GCP. Like literally, it encompasses everything that has to do with that. And then moving on to Microsoft part, it talks about Sentinel. It talks about how to use most of these Microsoft 365 Defender tools and stuff like that, which is something that these companies use, right? So once you use this and you get that hands-on experience on there while studying for it it will make it a lot easier make your life a lot easier once you land a job and then we have the ibm cybersecurity certification this one is really great as well right this one also gives you that hands-on labs that you could do while you're studying the main reason why i'm putting these at a one is because it gives you that real life test that you could actually do to make sure that you are understanding the topic rather than actually giving you a book you study your book you cram it in your head and you're done and i guess what you, you, you go apply for a job. To me, I feel as though that those, those certifications are really worthless. That's just my honest opinion. Not to say that the other people that have taken it, it's not going to work for them. It does. It does, right? It does. I'm not saying it's not going to work for them, all right? So the next certification that we're going to talk about is the cloud certifications. The cloud certifications are one that every single company in America or around the world is in need of. We'll talk about the Azure cloud certifications, the AWS cloud certifications, GCP as well. And most of the one in demand is the uh, um, AWS cloud certifications because AWS is still the market leader when it comes to the cloud sector of things okay so 
AWS Cloud Certification, you could actually start from the practitioner and then you go to the specialization and then you can start taking the AWS security because you have a lot of companies out there that they have actually transitioned to cloud, but then they don't have enough resources or let me say enough people to help them maintain their AWS environment like their EC2s, S3s, all those stuff, Cloudflare, blah, 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 all those stuff. They don't have enough people to actually maintain that. So all the AWS certifications that have to do with security or all the Microsoft certifications that have to do with security, those are ones that I would actually recommend that you take as well because those ones are great those ones will help you out when you land a job because these companies are moving to the cloud right they're moving to the cloud so that's something that you can actually benefit from as well i do hope that i gave you some great jobs today trust me guys if i said anything that rubbed you off wrongly i am sorry but i'm being honest right these are some of the th things that i feel as though oh these are some of the certifications i feel as though are necessary and these are some of the ones that i feel as though are not necessary because some of them you can cram it go take a test you're done right you just have to be smart you cram it take a test you're done some of them it actually gives you real world labs that you can actually do to understand the actual topic or the actual subject that you're talking about which makes your life a lot more easier once you land a job so you're not caught wanting all those imposter syndromes are not coming while you're actually you know working all right i do hope that i gave you some great gems today till i see you again stay blessed be blessed and god bless peace